Hi everyone. Welcome to Professor Long's Lectures in Anatomy and Physiology. If you're watching these videos, you're either enrolled in my class, so learn what I teach you and cover the material that I cover. If you're in someone else's class and you stumbled across this on the inner Google uh, through YouTube or whatever, then uh, learn what your instructor wants you to know. I hope this video helps you understand some of that if they're just flashing PowerPoints at you that you can't make sense of. So I'm going to draw everything out and explain it in real simple terms and then we'll get a little bit more detailed. Now we're covering some lab material and we're covering the digestive system in part 2 AMP. Um, and the digestive tract is a tube that goes from this opening ah, to that opening. So, so if we put food in, there's some musculature that runs it through the tract. These smooth muscles contract involuntarily and it's going to come out the other end eventually whether I want it to or not. Along the way, we're going to absorb all the nutrients and the goodness from the things that we eat, the valuable nutrients like um, the components of carbohydrates and proteins. From carbohydrates, we absorb the simple sugars, monosaccharides. We absorb amino acids from proteins. We absorb fatty acids and glycerol from triglycerides and other lipids. And we absorb the nucleotides and their components, the five carbon sugar, ribose or deoxyribose, phosphate, and the um, nitrogenous bases. All of those nutrients and valuable ions like sodium, potassium, calcium, uh, chloride, and all these other ions get absorbed also, as well as water. Once we're done absorbing all the vitamins and minerals and nutrients that we consume, whatever's left over, the trash, comes out the other end as waste. Now along that pathway, if I could take the digestive tract, right, and I'm just going to draw a, a real quick generic picture so that we can get oriented to what we need to learn here. If I have the tube coming down like this, and then it starts to increase in size like at the stomach and the small intestine, and even if I get down to the large intestine, if I slice it here, or if I slice it here, or if I slice it here, and I were to look down the tube, I would see a ring of tissue, and I would see it's all folded up on the inside, and then there would be some layers here. If I sliced it here, it would be a larger ring, but it would still be folded up, and there would be some thickness to the wall. If I slice the small intestine, it won't be as large, but it'll still be folded up, and the folds in there are a little bit different. And from the outside to the inside of the tube, by the way, the inside of the tube is always called the lumen, because light luminescence goes through on a slide. So the lumen would be the inside of our digestive tract, and then this would be the wall where the visceral peritoneum would be surrounding it. If I look through this, then I'm going to see certain layers to this wall. Let me make sure you can see everything that I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm right near the upper edge there. So now, <clears throat> I'm going to zoom in on this. I'm going to draw it bigger. I'm going to talk about these layers. And then we're going to draw it out so that we can see the models. And then I'll go over the models. Okay? So now, let me erase all of this. Now imagine if I'm zooming in on this and making it even bigger. So I'm going to have, and I'm going to change the colors, okay? So I'm going to have a lining here that's like this. It's all folded up, and I'm going to make it a nice thin pink layer. This lining, anytime we can reach in from the outside world and touch it, we're touching epithelium. So this layer here, is going to be called the digestive epithelium. Okay? It's the digestive epithelium. Now, out here is going to be another layer, and this would be the lumen inside. Okay? And I'm going to leave it a little bit open there because I'm going to write a lot. Just deep to the digestive epithelium is a layer of connective tissue. So I'm going to use an orange marker. And we can see there's going to be a thin layer of connective tissue right underneath the epithelium. And this connective tissue would go all the way around here. And it's not very thick. It's a little thicker than the epithelium, but not much. Okay. So now, this layer of connective tissue is always referred to as the lamina propria. Now, I'm just going to put CT in, in parentheses as connective tissue. Now, deep to that is going to be two thin layers of muscle fibers. 
that run like this. And I'm only going to draw it as a single layer. Actually, let me do it twice. There would be two layers of this muscle here. Going all the way around. And both of those layers together are called the muscularis. Oops. Let me rewrite that. Muscularis interna. And some books call it the muscularis intima. Yeah, you can just barely see that on the edge. Good, you can see it. Now, deep to that is going to be another layer, which is much thicker, of this connective tissue. And it's going to go all the way around. I'm not going to draw this all the way around any longer, but you get the idea. We go around here. So this next layer of connective tissue, and by the way, the muscularis interna, I'm going to put this in parentheses, it's actually made out of a type of muscle called smooth muscle. We talked about smooth muscle and skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle. Now, this next layer of connective tissue here is called the submucosa. The reason it's called the submucosa is because these layers above it are referred to as the mucosa. Now, some books say it's only the first two layers, the epithelium and the lamina propria, make up the mucosa. And some say it's all three layers, all the way to the muscularis interna. As a matter of fact, some books call the muscularis interna the muscularis mucosa, because it's the muscle layer of the mucosa. So those three layers make up the mucosa, then that means this layer is below the mucosa. It's called the submucosa. Okay? So now... Once I get past the, the submucosa, there's two more layers of thick muscle. One of the muscle fiber layers, the muscle fibers will go around this way. And again, I'm not going to draw it all the way around, but you can picture that. And then there's another layer where the muscle fibers are running this way. They're actually running at you. So imagine if I have some fingers running this way, and I have my other fingers running this way, you would see the tips of my fingers. And this is also a thick layer of muscle fibers and these little bundles running the length of the digestive tract. And again, I'm not going to go all the way around, but you get the idea, I hope. So there's a thick layer of muscle. Both of these layers combined are called the muscularis externa. So I have an inner layer of muscle and an outer layer of muscle. Both of those layers have two layers of muscle tissue. And if you look at this first layer here, it's going around the tract as we look down it. So the inner layer is always called the circular muscle. And the outer layer is always called the longitudinal muscle. And... I would have the same two layers on the muscularis interna, by the way. The inner is circular, the outer is longitudinal. We're not going to label them here. Now, where the visceral peritoneum is, this outer layer right here, this outer edge of the entire tract, would be called the serosa. The serosa is literally also called the visceral peritoneum. And on our models, sometimes you can see the thin layer of connective tissue between the muscularis externa and the serosa. And that thin layer of muscle tissue would be called the subserosa. Now, again, these three layers here together combined would be called, I'm going to do this, I hope it doesn't mess up your drawing or make it too messy, but this would be called the mucosa. Okay? So these three layers, the way I learned it, are called the mucosa. So if I look, these are the major layers of, this, of the lining of all of our tract, the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine, the large intestine. I have the lumen, which is where the digestive contents would be. And then I have the digestive epithelium, the lamina propria, and the muscularis mucosa or muscularis interna. These layers combined are called the mucosa. Below that is the submucosa, the muscularis externa with the inner circular and outer longitudinal, the subserosa and serosa. 
if I want to simplify it, it's mucosa, submucosa, muscularis externa, subserosa, and serosa. The mucosa has three layers, digestive epithelium, lamina propria, muscularis interna, or muscularis mucosa. And then the muscularis externa has two sublayers: the circular muscle and the longitudinal muscle. This is true for the entire digestive tract. With the exception of the stomach, the muscularis externa of the stomach has another layer squeezed in here called the oblique muscle, and we'll see that in a moment. Also, sandwiched in between some of these layers are other structures, nerves, blood vessels, um, networks of nerve called a plexus with some lacteals and um, lymphatic vessels, and we're going to talk about all that in a second. Now. Now that I know all those layers, watch. If I were to just erase this top half of the model, or this top half of the picture, if I just erase a big chunk of it, what I'm going to get is I would still have all of those layers, and I could have drawn arrows to all of them, epithelium, lamina propria, muscularis interna, submucosa, circular longitudinal, subserosa, and serosa. Look, I'm gonna show you two models, let me grab them. These two models represent parts of our digestive tract. This is the wall of your stomach. I'm going to go from the lumen through all of these layers. I have the mucosa. There's the muscularis mucosa with its two layers. The submucosa, the muscularis externa. It's going to have three layers, oblique, circular, longitudinal, subserosa, and serosa. Okay. Now, if I look at this model, I have the same thing, only it's a little bit more complex. Right on the edge, this pink layer would be digestive epithelium. The white layer with all the green and all the blood vessels in it would be the, the, um, would be the lamina propria. And then this thin dark line is going to be the muscularis interna. This would be the submucosa. I have the two layers of the, of the muscularis externa, circular and longitudinal. Of course, we drew it this way, circular and longitudinal, but we're going to turn it this way and look at it from this view. And then I have some other layers sandwiched in here, which I'm going to go over with you. Essentially, these two models show us the same thing, and there are some details that I left out. So again, I'm going to draw all this out, and then on the video, I'm going to go show you on the models. So give me just a minute. Let me set this down. Let me erase all of this. I'm going to take a section out of this picture. And I'm gonna zoom in on it big time so that we can see all of this. I'm actually gonna make two drawings that will be representative of our models. So hopefully you can see all of the detail, okay? Let me check something from my video view. All right, good. So now, on this side, I'm gonna do the stomach wall. This is the model of the stomach wall. I'm going to draw it out the way that it should appear. Oh, and I, drew, I wrote that a little bit too high, so let me lower it. So we're going to draw the wall of the stomach, a cross section through the wall of the stomach. And this would be representative of the model that we're about to do. Now, right on the edge, there's going to be a little thin layer of cells that do this. And it's going to be a very thin layer of cells that go around like this. The type of epithelium here would be called simple columnar. So I'm going to put some little lines in here that represent the simple columnar cells right on the edge. I'm not going to draw this perfectly, but you get the idea. Now, I'm going to change the color here a little bit. And the reason I'm going to change the color is because the model changes colors a little bit as well. And these cells will dip down a little bit further, but it changes colors. And it forms this little groove that runs in here. And on this side, I would have the same thing as it folds back up. There's a reason I'm doing this this way, and I'll show you in just a second. 
These cells right on the edge would be the digestive epithelium that we just labeled in our other drawing. But now I can actually see the epithelial cells. There would be a bunch of simple columnar cells here. And it continues and changes colors and folds back up. Just deep to that are going to be this area that's colored in like this. And actually, this stuff changes colors as well. And on this model, I really didn't draw it exactly the way that it appears, but you'll see what I mean in a second. But all of this tissue in here would be the lamina propria. There's going to be two thin lines of muscle tissue running across here like this. So all of this tissue in here would be the lamina propria. And then this would be the muscularis interna, also called the muscularis mucosa. I'll put that in parentheses. If I look at the model very closely, I'm going to see a thick layer of adipose tissue and some connective tissue, and it'll have some blood vessels in it, but there's going to be a thick layer of stuff. Since these three layers together are called the mucosa, all of this layer here be called the submucosa. And then if I look at the model carefully, there will be a layer of some muscle tissue. And if I look at the edge of it very carefully, some of these fibers would be coming in at funky angles. And it makes a very thin layer. And if I look carefully at the model, there's another layer where the muscle fibers are going to be running this way. And then the third one, the muscle fibers would be running like this. All of this together is the muscularis externa. The innermost layer is called the oblique muscle. This would be the circular muscle, and then this would be the longitudinal muscle. And only the stomach has that oblique layer. And then there'll be again another thin layer of connective tissue, and then there will be the edge of the model. There's a thin layer running like this. This would be the serosa. And this would be the subserosa. So all the layers that we just drew are here. I have the digestive epithelium, the lamina propria, the muscularis interna, submucosa, the muscularis externa. Since this is the stomach, I have oblique, circular, and longitudinal. Then I would have the subserosa and the serosa. Finally, if I were to look down on top of the model, if I were to look at the surface of the stomach, I would see these big rounded folds called the rugi, and I would see these little holes. So imagine if I was looking down on top of this, this would be like a hole that would run down into the stomach, like a long tube. So if you were flying over the streets of a city, you would see where they have the, the drainage things, where they have what's called a manhole cover or a or person hole cover, I guess, in our politically correct world. but. If you took the cover off, there would be a hole in the street that would go down to the plumbing of the city. And they would run down this way. If I could slice it open, it would look like a long slender tube. That's these tubes running here. Now, the reason it's two different colors is the initial part of the tube is called a gastric pit. This groove or this tube. The bottom half, where it's lighter in color on both of these, the same groove, is called a gastric gland because it secretes a lot, of, a lot of, there's a lot of secretions that are released here. So if I ask you for the groove in the pink part, the upper part, it's called a gastric pit. 
But when I get down here where it's changed color, it's called the gastric gland, okay? You'll understand what I'm talking about when I show you on the model in a second. So now, let me see. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna slide my camera over a little bit to give myself a little bit more room to make another drawing, all right? On this other model, we're gonna see what's called the small intestine. In the small intestine, we have the exact same structures. Now on the model, it's slightly different. On the small intestine model, the folds are a little bit more finger-like on the edge. And then they have these little dips in here like this. And if I look carefully at the model, there would be some cells here. That outer layer is the digestive epithelium. And where these things dip down, I would have two layers of muscle tissue here running. That's going to be the muscularis interna. And the white background here, all of this white here and here, would be the lamina propria. I'm going to put white in parentheses because on this model, it's sort of a white layer. Okay. Now, mixed in that white layer are going to be blood vessels, red and blue vessels, arteries and veins and capillaries. But then there will be these green structures sticking up inside of here. And these little green structures sticking up are called lacteals. Lacteals are lymphatic vessels. In our small intestine where we start to absorb nutrients, we can also absorb fats and fats can be absorbed through these lacteals and then they go down into our bloodstream. So that's those little green things that are gonna stick up on the model. Now below that, I'm gonna have a thick layer of adipose tissue that's also gonna have a lot of blood, uh, lymph vessels and blood vessels in it. But that whole layer is called the submucosa. Now, below that, I'm gonna have a layer of muscle fibers that look like these large rings. And I'm gonna have a layer of muscle fibers that do this. All of that is the muscularis externa. The inner layer is always circular and the outer layer is always the longitudinal muscle. I'm not gonna write out the word longitudinal because we've done that before. And then I would have a very thin layer of connective tissue, which would be called the subserosa and the serosa, which I'm not going to label because we're not going to see them on the model very well. So I still have the same layers, digestive epithelium, digestive epithelium, lamina propria, lamina propria, muscularis interna, muscularis interna, submucosa, submucosa. If I asked for the layers combined, it would be called the mucosa, submucosa, muscularis externa. In the stomach, I have oblique, circular longitudinal in the small intestine i only have circular and longitudinal to the muscularis externa and we would have a subserosa and a serosa and they're not really visible on this other model a couple of more details i want to show you here rather than have gastric pits and gastric glands the small intestine has these little loops of connective i mean of epithelium that dive down and they are glandular so those structures right there are called intestinal crypts or they're also called the crypts of Lieberkuhn so if you see that in a textbook those are called intestinal crypts and I'm going to show them to you on the model that'll make sense the other thing you'll see is all these little star-shaped neurons that are all connected to each other in white and you'll see some down here and you'll see these very large lacteals sandwiched in here. So between the submucosa and the muscularis externa, there's a layer of neurons and a network of these um, lymphatic vessels. And that network of neurons, and sometimes people include the lymphatic vessels, is called the submucosal plexus. I'm not going to write it on the board because I just don't have any room, but this would be called the submucosal plexus. And the one buried inside the muscle layers is called the myenteric plexus. Myenteric means inside the muscle. 
So I hope from the drawings you can see what I'm talking about. All of these layers are the same. So if I were to hold up the model and start to try to go over them with you, where did I set my pointer? Well, I guess I'll just use my finger. Oh, here's one, excuse me. So I don't know how well you can see this, but I'm gonna shoot the video anyway. So I can see these large folds called ruby. I see these little channels running down and in the pink area, those would be called gastric pits. And in the yellow area, the grooves would be called gastric glands. Right on the edge, I could see the cells. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna stop this video. I'm gonna do another video that's a close-up of these models so that I can see what I'm looking at as I show them to you. So I hope the drawings make sense. Now watch this video over the models and you'll see all the layers. Thanks for watching.